Hi, alive to all of you. New life to everybody watching. I'm super excited to once again come to your world with the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If I was a church, I would say, tell your neighbor, my neighbor, a prophet is never late. A prophet is always on time. Amen. I'm happy to see Kiran. I'm happy to see Clara. I'm happy to see uh, my daughter, Shelly. I'm happy to see everybody. Amen. I believe by the Spirit of God that we are alive. You are welcome. I believe your lives will never be the same again. Last time I checked, if you're watching on YouTube, you have to be able to, to share the pretty easy life. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. I see Boris is here saying, I see we have well watching on YouTube. Life of Ines saying, higher life apostle, higher life to you. I want us to take about two minutes in prayer in the Holy Ghost. Praying that the Spirit of God will give us understanding. Especially you who's listening, it's very important that you ask God to give you understanding. Because things of the spirit are never meant to be understood by carnal minds or carnal minded people. You can be a Christian, but carnal mind. So we need to pray that God will give you, actually you're praying for yourself here, spirit of understanding, spirit of revelation. Go ahead. Shall not go back to God without accomplishing and fulfilling its mission in your life. Pray for the spirit of revelation. Stand against any spirit that causes you at any given time to misunderstand, misinterpret, and mishandle the word of God. Just lift up your voice in prayer wherever you are. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everybody under the sound of my voice. That, Father, your word shall not go back to you void. Just as a seed that is thrown on God and planted on a fertile soil, I pray that their hearts, O oh God, are fertile in the name of Jesus. And once the word gets into their spirit, their spirit and gives them a future. I pray for the spirit of understanding, the spirit of revelation to rest upon everybody. Mind in the name of Jesus. Well, once again, those that are on Zoom, I want to see you wave your hands. There we go. That's more like it. Those that are on YouTube and you're tuning in for the first time, kindly let us know you're tuning in for the first time and where you're tuning in from. And if you have been here and this is not your first time, Go ahead and put on your fire emojis on your comment sections so we know that you are here. Amen. Today, I'm going to be deep. Today, I'm going to be super deep. I'm not just going to be deep, but I'm going to be super, super, super deep. Those that are asking for Zoom link, we have the link on the pinned comment there on top, so you can use that. We have uh, somebody here saying first. I don't know if that's first time or first uh, 
Kimberly Kennedy has been here. I can see that we have a lot of people that are not new here. That's good. Amazing. Amazing. Get your Bible and go ahead and lift it up high. Say it like you mean it. Lift it up high. If you don't have your Bible, lift up your hand. Say, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. I, believe. I believe. It contains the Word of God. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I will do what it says I will do. Today I will be taught the word of God. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive to receive the incorruptible word of God. And my life shall never Ever, 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 be the same again. Be the same again. Somebody shout glory. glory. One more time, shout glory. glory. For the last time, shout glory. glory. If you are somebody who loves writing, well, today that is uh, that day. Today is that day for you to be writing. What are we talking about today? Well, we are talking about so many things, yet we have the title for the day. Rather, we have a subject for the day, and that is technology of the spirit. If you will, I didn't want to call it spiritual technology because now that is big and that is vast. But however, we are dealing with the technology of the spirit. Somebody highlight the technology of the spirit. Next week, it will make more sense. It is in the book of Ephesians chapter 6. I'm going to be fast, but I'm going to be slow at the same time. So, Holy Ghost, and you better be excited. You better be excited. The book of Ephesians chapter 6, and we read from verses 10 for the sake of context. What is Apostle Paul saying to the church? Read for us, Sister Nongkazumo. Thank you, Apostle. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. That's correct. Finally, my brethren. Loi pon, my brethren. Mm -hmm. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. In the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, uh -huh. that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. My God. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Talk to me. But against principalities. Talk to me. Against powers. Talk to me. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Mm. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. He says against spiritual wickedness in high places places. I want us to read another verse so that we can marry these two and we flow in the Holy Ghost. And of course, this has to be Paliga Malevre Hesadia Kabandu. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Chapter 1. And I want us to read verses 17, and we go down. Amen. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. Yes, ma'am. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh -huh. the Father of glory, mm -hmm. may give unto you the spirit of wisdom mm -hmm. and revelation in the knowledge of him. My God. The eyes no, of... No, 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 no. Be with me. One more time. Read it again. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. Yes, ma'am. That the God of our Lord and revelation uh -huh. in the knowledge of him. My God. Now, verse 19. Verse 19. That's correct. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power uh -huh. to us what who believe mm -hmm. according to the working of his mighty power? According to the working of what? His mighty power. 
And if you pay attention to verse 10, he speaks about us being strong in verse 10 of chapter 6. Pay attention, everybody. We are now moving. You are, you are with Apostle Mies, so we are going to be deep. So you must have your Bible. If you don't have your Bible, pay attention to what's written on your screens. Because when we move to 6, he speaks about the mighty power or the power of his might. Right? Did that make sense? One more last verse. It will make sense as we continue to put it together. Uh, chapter 1, and you read verses 3. Our favorite. Every believer loves this one. Yes. Amen. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. That's correct. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who has done what? Who hath blessed us with, with what? all spiritual blessings. With all spiritual blessings. Where? In heavenly places in Christ. In heavenly places in what? In Christ. In heavenly places. In what? In Christ. Somebody holla, give, give me the word. Please be seated, Sister Nonkas. Let me minister. You better be here. So I'm going to take my time in breaking it down, but I'm going to be fast. What is the technology of the Spirit? Let's start by talking about or dealing with physical technology. I'm not going to be scholastic in it. So whenever we are talking about physical technology, we are talking about man-made technology. We are talking about <clears throat> to shape the world of men. The way they think the world of men should be like. I was, that's a physical technology. Men using what's available because men does not have the ability to create, but man makes. So the difference between creation and making is that when you create, you are making something out of nothing. But when you make, you make out of something. That's why God created in the beginning, but in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, he made, or rather formed. So he was made, not created. He, she was taken out of the rib, and God made Eve. Are we together? Not, and God created Eve. I'm not talking about Genesis 1, 27 here. I'm talking about the book of Genesis chapter 2. Are you guys still with me? So we have creating here, where one creates out of nothing. Just as God did in the beginning. Where the Bible says, in the beginning, God created. Meaning, God reached out of nothing. Grabbed something that was hanging on nothing. And out of the nothing, God created something. Glory be to God. And that is creation. But now, men can create. What men can do and what man is capable of doing is to make something. Out of something. Glory be to God. So whenever we are talking about technology, we are then talking about, that's man-made technology, right? Physical technology. We are talking about men using what's available to him. What's present to him. To, are we together? Physical technology. Write this one down. It will make sense in a while. Just give me a few seconds of your time. You'll be glad you did. So whenever we're talking about the technology of the spirit, we're talking about the application of spirit. So we're talking about the application of spiritual knowledge for the practical purposes or for practical purposes, so to say. It will make sense in a while. Let me go to the scripture. And as I dive in and I dive in, it will make sense. Are you still there or you went home? So just as we have physical technology, we have spiritual technology. The reason why, adults, is because they don't understand how things of the spirit work. Let me repeat that. Have you ever wondered why Christians do a lot of things but don't see results? They don't understand 
doing something, it does not mean I understand what I'm doing. That's why out of everything, the wisest men advised, acquiring now, he says, get understanding. In all thy getting, get understanding. And that is because it's one thing to have information. It's another thing to have wisdom. But it's another thing to have understanding. Glory be to God. So a, a lot of Christians do so many things, but with no results. Everywhere but nowhere. And trust me, you see a very few believers producing results. I'm not saying that they don't talk. They talk. But I'm talking about results. Because you can argue with one plus one. But you can argue with two. Because two is the results. Two is the answer. So a lot of them, they talk. But when it comes to results now, there's really nothing to show for you. They love God. They walk with God. They believe in God. But talk about results. Not many of them can produce results. And that is because they don't understand how spiritual things work. So they approach spiritual things using their own understanding. The Bible speaks about comparing spiritual to the spiritual. Meaning spiritual things are compared to spiritual things. So you can't use time to manipulate spiritual time. Because physical time. So you can't use physical time to manipulate spiritual time. I don't know if they get it. Rather, the spiritual manipulates the physical. Hence, the Bible says, things that are seen were made out of what? Things that are not seen. And that is where now we are talking about the spiritual world. Glory be to God. Let me break down the Bible now. I'm going to take my time here. And I'm going to teach like I'm teaching a Sunday school. <laughs> so that you don't miss a thing. Paul says, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Uh, we are familiar with that kind of power that he's talking about there. As we all know that when the Bible was translated, some words were duplicated. They spell the same, they sound the same, but they don't mean the same thing. So every time you read, it's important for you to understand what kind of a power or what type of power is the Bible talking about here. As you all know, actually, most believers are familiar with uh, the four types of power. You know, they know iskus, they know... Praise the Lord, everybody. I don't want to talk about Anakazu here, but those that are hearing for it for, about it for the very first time without Anakazu, you can't be an evangelist without Anakazu. You can't be a pastor without Anakazu. You can't be a teacher of the word without Anakazu. Just as for one to witness the new dunamis, remember Acts 1 and 8, you shall receive power. And after that power comes on you, you shall be my witnesses. Meaning you don't witness by desire. You witness because of power. So you don't witness because you love Jesus. You witness because of power. You don't witness because you are a Christian. You witness because of power. That is dunamis, right? And we know what dunamis does when a believer receives it. But the power that he's talking about here is demonstrated power. So he says, finally, my brothers and sisters, be strong Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles. That is the word methods. That is the word strategies from the word strategia. That is the word pros of the devil. Meaning the devil, when he comes, he comes organized. When he comes, he comes organized. He has methods. And if he has methods for you to dismantle him, you need to understand his methods. Remember, this is the technology of the spirit. So you need to hear me here because you are going to hear it in a way that you have never heard it before. Right. So he has methods, meaning he has, a, he has he, this, this is an organized uh, 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 group, so to say, to stand against. 
Not just the wiles, but the methods. So everything here is organized. Let's go deeper now. He says, for we wrestle. This is where my message takes place. Right? This is where it's happening. It's taking place right here. And it's taking off from here. He says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. You see, a lot of believers, they know this verse. Listen, some of you, as I'm talking to you right now, you actually know it in and out of, even if they can wake you up and say Ephesians 6, 12, you quote to have memory, but against speaking through him. That's what I would love to believe. The Holy Ghost was speaking through him. He says against principalities. He then says against powers, right? He then says against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness. And then he says in high places. Let me quickly break it down. We all know that we have three realms. We have the realm of God, which is the realm of eternity. We have the realm of angels, which is the everlasting realm. Then last but not least, we have the realm of men, which is the realm of time. But between the realm of men and the realm of angels, we have a realm called the celestial realm. And that realm is what we call spiritual realm. So every time you hear somebody saying, in the realms of the spirit, they are actually talking about the celestial realm. Now, it is in that realm that the Bible says we wrestle against all these things that are mentioned. So these things that are mentioned are not in the realm of God, are not in the realm of angels, but are in the celestial realm. And you and I are just beneath that realm. And that realm that is a realm not of principalities, uh, wickedness, and all these things only. But it is also a realm of angels that are of God. That's why the celestial realm is called the realm of all spirits. Meaning you find good and you find bad. Right? But here's what the Bible also say in Ephesians 1, 3. That you and I, follow me here. This is technology of the spirit. We have been blessed with all kinds of blessings. And the Bible gives us a location of where the blessings are places in heavenly places so the blessings that god has given me he has put them in high places in high places because in high places that's where god has put all spiritual blessings that belongs to me and you so meaning for me to be able to get in there and pull down that which belongs to me i must be able to overthrow principalities powers rulers I think you are the wrong people. Zoom, tell me nicely. Are you the right people or you are the wrong people? We can do this another day. We can certainly... I'm no longer seeing anything here. So, we can certainly do this... We, we can do this another day. Let me talk to my YouTube people. Tamika is understanding it, I believe. <laughs> Rich and Clove is here. Andile is here. Veronica Malope is here. Learning, amen. It is important, hence I said to you when I started, are you still here? Yes. Christians do a lot of things, but don't see results. They don't understand how spiritual things work. Amen. You see, the Bible on its own tells you that we are in a warfare. There is war going on. And it tells you where the war is taking place. Please hear me here. Don't hear it because it's just, you know, there and I'm saying it. But hear me with the ears of the spirit. So there is war here in this location. 
Then God himself decided to bless us and took all those blessings. All came as a result of the blessings. Can you just put uh, Ephesians, let them see it one, one more time. Uh, Ephesians 1, 3. And if we can do NIV, I thought I was going to really hit quick, quickly, and then quick, 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 and then we move forward. But I, I, I feel in my spirit I need to go deeper and help other believers to understand this, especially those that are still maturing in um, their walk with God. So they hear what I'm saying. Screen as well. That will be good. Just, you, you can read King James. They can put it on NIV there. Uh, Ephesians 1, 3. book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So we are blessed with all. But I want you to understand that these blessings are spiritual. Amen. Hence they are in heavenly places. Amen. I want you to get that, okay? They are where? In heavenly places. So it means if I'm looking for this kind of a blessing that God is talking about in his word, I don't have to go to the realm of angels. It's not there. I don't have to go to the realm of God. It is not there. I have to go to the heavenly places. And that is, do NIV. Ephesians uh, 6, and we read verses 12. And if you can do NIV, that will be good. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, NIV. Uh -huh. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, uh -huh. but against the rulers, against the authorities, mm. against the powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil in mm. the heavenly realms. In the heavenly realm. Because every time we say, in the spiritual realm, in the heavenly realm, now they understand that the blessings are in a realm. And that realm is called heavenly. And LV, NLT, which Amen. is New Living Translation. Yep. Amen. For we, we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, uh -uh. But, but against evil rulers and authorities uh -huh. of the unseen world, uh -huh. against mighty powers uh -uh. in this dark world, uh -huh. and against evil spirits in the what? In the heavenly places. In the heavenly places. Do you see that now? I believe Eugelion is getting it. Yes, Eugelion is very prophetic. Mm -hmm. Listen, the Bible says, three places. Yes, Meaning, if you are not equipped, if you are not trained, if you are not aware of the wiles, the methods, the strategies of the enemy, yes, you will be shooting in blanks. Mm -hmm. You will wonder why I do a lot, but I don't, I don't see results. Yes, because when, when it comes to what you have been given by God, for you to fathom it, uh, there are spiritual roadblocks 24-7 waiting there. Meaning you need to know what to do to overthrow all these spiritual roadblocks. I don't know if it makes sense. I think we should just shut down Zoom. I think the problem is Zoom. It's not the people. Let me, let, let me focus on YouTube only. Myself, I'll be focused here because on Zoom, I have too much VIPs and I'm not understanding it. The, 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 the people that I'm usually with are not here today here. So meaning they are actually on YouTube today. So I'll focus there. Rich Love is saying it's sinking in, say. Now, I want you to understand that Paul there is talking about principalities, right? If you pay attention, you realize that he says, against principalities. Yes, Glory be to God. Hallelujah. He then, after uh, principalities, he then says powers. What is a principality? Because if he says, the blessings in Ephesians 1, 3, they are in heavenly places. Then he comes and says, the war is also in heavenly places. Meaning nobody can fathom. That which belongs to them but unborn to time until they overthrow. Either a because already is you have been blessed. 
So there is something that belongs to you, but unborn to time. And that thing, God has released it in a realm of all spirits. So he then tells you that though it's there, there is war going through. You can't fight and win an enemy you have not identified. That's why you are advised, never get in a ring with an enemy that you don't understand. Even in the world, they will tell you, if you read the, the Art of War by Sun Tzu, that the first thing that you need to do is to understand your enemy first before you go to war with your enemy. Are we together? So the Bible, every time, all along has been telling us that we are in a warfare, but with principalities. But believers don't understand what principalities are. And that which belongs to them, but not, and not born to time, is right where the principalities are getting, get understanding. My people die because they lack knowledge. Now, let me break it down. If you guys can allow me to break it down, I can. Let's go. So what is a principality? Because you have an enemy, but you need to understand the enemy. You need to understand his wiles, his methods. So the enemy first here, the devil, so to say, he puts principalities. Who are principalities? The word principality simply means a prince without a territory. So they are without a territory. But guess what? Because they are without a territory, Every time they want to overthrow a people in the territory. I don't know if that makes sense to them. I think the teaching of today is too deep for some people here. Asking, are you getting it? Because I don't want you to miss it at all. So somebody's getting it. Uh -huh. So is a prince without a territory. So when they come, right, and how they operate, remember... We are not the ones fighting in the sense of going into the war phase. We see the spirits and we are fighting. It's a spiritual battle, right? But the Bible is telling us where it's happening. And also who we are up against, right? But for us to overthrow this enemy, we need to understand his methods. That's why the Bible speaks about the wiles of the head of the enemy. It's like somebody... Planting a bomb there, planting a bomb there, plant. You can't go to the enemy's camp blindly. Yes, sir. That's why Jesus said in the book of Matthew chapter 12, when you read 28, 29, he says, how can one enter into a strong man's house? Except he first bind the strong man. Then he will plunder his good. Here the, Jesus was talking about the devil. That you can't just go in the house of the devil and plunder his goods. You in months or spirits, so to say. Princes without territory. What they do is, Whenever they want to overthrow a people or anytime they feel they are assigned to a people or to a, to a territory, they don't come in and take over that territory. Because when it comes to spiritual matters, it's a battle of atmospheres. It will make sense in a while. It will make sense in a while. And when we talk about atmosphere, is the first thing that they do, they scan a territory. This will make sense. Just give me time. They scan a territory. And while they are scanning a territory, they are looking for people who are gifted spiritually. That's the first thing that they do. And once they see that this one and that one and that one are prophetic in this territory, are we together? What they then do is they start attacking that person who is spiritual. Yes, but how do they attack the person? They attack the person sometimes using lust. Sometimes one will be like, how can the devil enter somebody in the family? In the days of Jesus, Peter spoke and said, Master, you are not going to die. I will die. So every time we deal with principalities, you need to understand and know that we are not dealing with small, small things. Seeing the principality, you are addressing your mother-in-law. It is not your mother-in-law fighting you. Ah, uh -uh, you are not getting me. No, 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 no. You see, yet it was Peter speaking. So you are eating your own mother. You are hating your own grandmother. 
You are failing to address principality. Scan who is the weakest. They scan who is the strongest. Then as soon as they find the strongest, then they look for who is the weakest. I don't know if that makes sense. I don't know if that makes Prophetic. Then they start attacking you. Because some of you don't understand that your anointing does not only protect you and your family. Your anointing protects even the territory that you are in. Okay. I will give an example. There is a man in Ramah called Samuel. He is a prophet. That his spirit overshadowed Ramah. That everyone who entered Ramah was under the anointing of Samuel. I don't know if it makes sense to them. So people, if you were here, people, I will go deeper and reveal mysteries. But the way you are looking at me on Zoom, it clearly, it's, it's like you're not here. Clearly you're not here. So as I'm saying, so they begin to scan and check and they begin to attack that person. Now when they, are, they, when they start winning in attacking the strongest people, they don't pray like they used to. They don't fellowship like they used to. No more hunger. They think it's just them. It's just life. Things are just evolving. No. It's a principality. Praise the Lord, everybody. That has come to take over a territory. But in order for it to take over a territory, it must subdue you. So right there, you feel like prayer is no longer something that you are you love anymore. The spoil you pray 10 minutes. You're no longer praying 3 hours, you're praying 3 minutes. You, you, you see the difference right now. So you no longer flow like you used to. You push yourself to pray. It is no longer exciting. It's because now there is a principality that wants to overthrow you, right? But watch this now. So, because here mentions just as the fivefold ministries they are all there for one mission, right? But they have different functionalities. So if I understand the functionality of a prophet, it actually positions me. It determines how I'm going to receive. Not what, but how I'm going to receive. Because I know this is a prophet. I know this is an apostle. I know this is an evangelist. Are we together? So now, these ones, after a territory, they open door for powers. Then when powers come, they come for one thing, to establish a government. So after this evil one, unclean one, and after they successfully put things in place, after successfully putting things in place, guess what comes? Until powers establish a government. When rulers come, they come for one thing, to put laws. It has a mini skirt. It is by rulers, whatever that is, smokes weed. They go up, if, if one wants to fight it, they go up to come down. They will have 10 children with different fathers, all of them in that community, and nobody sees anything wrong with it. They even break, they, it's a competition. That's why some of you, you need to understand that there are dances or dance moves, so to say, that are not rulers of darkness, gave it out and placed it as a law. And say, so everyone in this territory will do this dance. And everybody sees a dance. No. When rulers now are successful in placing laws that controls that territory, that community, that place, are we together? To a wickedness. Power over Christians in that uh, city. No. They cannot rise unless that person who is powerful is overthrown. That's so when spiritual wickedness come, right, how does it operate? It starts hitting people with sicknesses. If you want to be an enemy to somebody that you have never even offended, just make progress in that community. Buying a $500, in fact, $500 is a lot, $100 grocery holding it like this, somebody will go to an unholy place to undo you and to unseat you. Operation in that land. I'm talking to myself here. Oh, yeah. And for you to understand the importance of prayer. Can I break it down? Yeah. This is how we overflow. And this is how. Praise the Lord everybody. 
you then need to enter into prayer. Why are we entering into prayer? Because prayer, I wish, I don't know how, you know, for, please don't, don't quote me here. I'm saying it, but don't quote me. I want to say it, but, right? Deposit and withdraw in the times of trouble. But prayer is an expiring date. For a lack of a better word, but I'm going to explain it. In my explanation, please, hear me here, right? Find what I just said. If you have a better word after explaining it, please put it there, then we'll call it that. Because sometimes it doesn't matter what we call it. What matters is what it means. People are waiting for you to produce results. No. It takes prayer for you to produce results. So you can be anointed, but if you are not a man of prayer... There will never be results. Mm. So Jesus here performs a miracle, and that was to multiply bread. Mm. People think because it's Jesus, he did it. No. Remember, prior to that, Jesus using power mm. to multiply that bread. Mm. But what kind of power is Jesus using here? He's using power generated in prayer. Yes, sir. Yes. The Bible says, and now it was about what? To be evening. And the disciples of Jesus got into the boat. Yes, and Jesus said to them, go ahead of me. Yeah. And it was about to be another watch. Mm. And Jesus left them. And he went for prayer. Mm. Mm. Now, before he performed that miracle, he was in prayer. After that miracle, he goes into prayer. But why is Jesus going into prayer? I don't know if the people are here. Ah, yeah. So that Jesus, because already the boat is gone, for him to defy, for him to defeat the law of floating and gravity, man has to generate power. So he comes walking on the water. Not because Jesus just decided to walk on the water. The man generated power. Are we together? It will make sense. It will make sense in a while. He generated power. And as a result, he's walking on top of the water. That's why when you read Matthew 8, the Bible says, as he, he prayed until it was towards morning, as he came down from the mountain, they came a man with a sweet desire. I know you can make me whole. And Jesus immediately prayed for him. He said, I want to. And Jesus made him whole. After that, the Bible says, and he heard that Simon's mother was sick. She had fever. Jesus went to heal the mother. And the Bible says he went to preach to multitudes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you see all these acts and you say, wow. But you don't know what is baking them up. He had to generate power yes, to do them. That's why after praying and he walked on the water, the Bible says, and he came into the boat. Soon after that, he said, let's cross to the other side. Oh, yeah. They went to the land of the Gadarians. He delivered a man who was possessed. Watch this now. And the man who was possessed after that, to show that Jesus was not there for many things, after that, he gets in the boat. He goes to that other side. When he gets to that other side, there came a man. The Bible says, and this was Jairus, saying, my daughter is sick. But while is Jesus is on his way to Jairus' daughter, to Jairus' house to heal the daughter, a woman with an issue of blood comes, touches Jesus, power leaves. That's why most of you, you say, oh God, I want to marry a great man of God. You need to understand what you are dealing with. Yes, a man of God can come from a crusade where power has left him. Yes, and he doesn't want to talk in the, on the road. And he gets home. You are thinking he's moody or he's frustrated. No! It's because at that time he is still trying to figure out how am I going to re-energize myself. I, I wish I could say it in a better way, but... I know how to say this one, but this one is only for the school of ministry. Are we together? Yes. And when power leaves them, they, they, they are frustrated. Jesus said, who touched me? If it was nothing, Jesus would not have entertained it. He would have went on with his business. And that is because the reason why Jesus said, who touched me? Is because he was on his way to heal somebody. Yes, now somebody took power. And the mystery behind this is the daughter of Jairus, she was 12 years old. This woman with the issue of blood, she had the issue for 12 years. And scholars believe 
she was about to die. So she saved herself from dying by withdrawing. The power that was supposed to heal who? Jeria's daughter. So Jeria's daughter, remember, Jeria said, my daughter is sick. Jesus said, take me to your house. So she was actually about to die. But what kept her alive was the virtue that was in Jesus. But when the virtue went out, the daughter died. I don't know if they got it. Uh -uh. No, 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 I don't know if they got it. So instead of the woman with the issue of blood, Jeria's daughter died. That's why Jesus will do a miracle in public. But when it came to Jerry's, why did he take Peter, John, James? Because when he was generating power in the mountain of transfiguration, he was with Peter, John, James. I don't know if... Judas would not have betrayed Jesus if Judas was in the mountain of transfiguration. That's another revelation for another day. Because he will have seen something that will have convicted him. I don't know if they understand this. Because I tell no man about this. Between men of prayer. One more time, say, break it down, Apostle. My daughter, uh, Charlotte, she's saying this is very deep. <laughs> I don't know if it may, it's making sense. I, I'm trying to be in the shallow, but I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense. So you guys understand when I said for a lack of a better word. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are we together? Yes. So if today I pray, so I can't use the same power that I generated that other side. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I need to generate another power. Oh, yeah. yes, sir. That's why uh -huh, those who don't understand will love to argue. That's why the book of James says, the prayers of a righteous man maketh tremendous power available. Meaning the power was not there, was not available. But the prayer of a righteous man made it available. So power can be generated. Wave your hand in the Holy Ghost. Wave your hand in the Holy Ghost. Power can be generated, brothers and sisters. We are generators of power. You don't wait for power that we call generated power. Yes, you don't wait for it. Mm -hmm. You yourself, you generate it. Mm -hmm. Are we together? Amen. Every anointed child of God must understand that. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why I have to bring this is because there are different types of people when it comes to prayer. Mm -hmm. There is what we call men of prayer. Write it down. This one, you have never heard it anyway. I'm about to break it down for you. The devil is a liar. We continue with the service. Now, watch this now. So there is a difference between an intercessor and also a man of prayer. Glory be to God. And because we are dealing with different deep topics now, the enemy wishes he can just shut down this broadcast. And we pray it doesn't happen. If it happens, listen, we come back. Because this, what I'm about to teach you now, is something that you have never heard. So there is a man of prayer here, right? And there is an intercessor here. A lot of people don't understand this. And a lot of intercessors are simply somebody who is summoned into a place of prayer. And why is God summoning you into a place of prayer? Right? Here, please hear me. God does not want to necessarily do something through you. Mm -hmm. But he wants to do something to you. Okay. Men of prayer, you are summoned into a place of prayer. Here, God does not necessarily want to do something through you. He wants to do something to you. Are we together? Then when you are an intercessor, right? You intercessor 
because you are a man of prayer, but faithful. Meaning when you become consistent in prayer, God makes you an intercessor. You don't make yourself an intercessor. Uh -uh. God makes you an intercessor. Glory be to God. Here you start walking under open heaven. These ones are carrying the burden of God in their hearts. Praise the Lord, everybody. Most of their prayers are not for themselves, but are to advance the kingdom of God in the life of men and in places or territories. These are intercessors. They have a burden in their heart, the burden of God. So most of their prayers, they have nothing to do with them. Are we together? But before you become an intercessor, you have to be a man of prayer. And if you are now consistent and faithful in that area, God now makes you an intercessor. That's why we always say, watch this now, every prophet is an intercessor. But not every intercessor is a prophet. And that is because whenever God reveals something to a prophet, he reveals to redeem. God is not a gossiper. He does not reveal things to a prophet just to satisfy his curiosity. No, 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 no. It's because God knows a prophet will do something about it. So now intercessors, that's why we say intercessors, right? Or rather a dimension called intercession. It is a womb that all prophets go through. So a prophet will have to go through that womb to come that, uh, on the other side. Yes, sir. I, I will explain it in the school of ministry better. It raises you to be a watcher. Mm. Okay. Wow. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A watcher is superior to an intercessor. Yes, sir. Please write it down. What is the difference between a watcher if clearance than intercessor? But this one has an authority. Praise the Lord, everybody. To give clearance to things before they enter a territory. So before things enter a territory, a watcher is there to give clearance. So you are a watcher in the spirit. Nothing goes in and nothing goes out until you give clearance. You are a, prayer pers- a prayerful person, but you are a watcher. So you have authority that an intercessor does not have. An intercessor is praying for others. Praying for the advancement of the kingdom of God. But cannot give clearance. So what makes an intercessor special is because of the burden that they have in their heart. And because of the open heaven. Are we together? Now when you become faithful. Or you remain faithful as a watcher. God raises you to be a seer. I don't know if they are understanding it. Hence, the Bible talks about Samuel being a seer. Samuel was more than a watcher. He was a seer. I don't know if that makes sense. Where everything that happened in Israel in his time where he was, happened under his watch. That God himself, when they rejected that guy, God said, they did not reject you. They rejected me. Why? Because Samuel was God's eyes. Samuel was God's hands. Samuel was God's mouth. I don't know if they understand what I'm saying. Because the seer is the whole head. You guys remember, right? That's why the Bible says in the book of First Samuel chapter, I believe it's chapter 7, if I'm not mistaken. It will be chapter 7, verse 30. It says, in all the days of Samuel, The hand of the Lord was against the Philistines. Meaning as long as Samuel was alive, whoever Samuel regarded as an enemy, that person was God's enemy. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. That is a seer dimension. When you are a seer, right here, right? God himself begins to walk through you. When you mark a territory, God is marking a territory. But you don't, just, that's why we say every seer is a what? Is an intercessor. 
Because you can't be a seer and don't understand what it means to be a watchman. That's why Habakkuk says, I, as a watchman, will see what the Lord will say. We don't see what the Lord says. We hear. So because you have graduated now in being a watcher, giving clearance, and you are faithful, God turns you into a seer now. Because of your faithfulness. That's why the Bible says, he who is faithful into what? Little things. Will be trusted with what? With great things. So, you know, with God, God does not just make you. No, no, he takes you through stages. Glory be to God. Then what happens when you are now a seer and you are faithful and you remain faithful in that seer realm? You don't become a prophet. No. Are we together? God raises you to become a judge. When you have time, please read the book of Judges, not in a hurry. Are we together? So he raises you not to be what? Not to be a prophet, but to be a judge. That's why most prophets are seers, but not most seers are prophets. I don't know if I have time. You say, some of the things I want to teach them here, but I'm not allowed. Are we together? That's why Paul, he says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 12, I know of a man, whether in the body or in the flesh, I cannot tell. He was caught up in paradise. He, he's specific, he's even specific there. He says, he, he was caught up in the third heaven. He says, the and as I'm about to say them, the spirit holds my tongue like this. Like, mm -mm, not this one. Then there are certain things we only teach in the school of ministry. Are we together? So, what is now a judge in this case? Right? When a seer becomes a, a, a judge here, your decision becomes God's decision. You can stand and speak against a community. And it's God speaking against it. Mm -hmm. You can stand and say, this community from today is blessed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but notice if you may, you did not start there. Mm -hmm. You started in a place of prayer. You see, in the summoning, Pastor Brian, God can say, pray 10 hours in tongues. Mm -hmm. In your mind, if you are not spiritual, you will be concerned about the 10 hours. Mm -hmm. God is not even looking at the 10 hours. Yes. Because in the spirit, can I explain the, the rule of the spirit? I don't know if this one, uh, you guys will get it. Never forget this. It's the law of the spirit. And the, 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 the physical law as well, called the law of balance, supports what I'm about to say. So in the spirit, the law says, when something leaves, something comes. I don't know how to say it. When something leaves, something comes. When something goes out, it opens a door for something to come in. So when you are in prayer for 10 hours, something is leaving. But it's leaving to open for something that is 10 hours. You miss what God wants to do. We wrestle, not against flesh and blood. That is my message. Look at me now. I'm even going deeper to things that I'm not supposed to. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Brothers and sisters, against principalities. Princes without territories. Do you know a person can be a principality? Because a principality has taken over that person. There are men, there are women who will withstand or rather who will stand against the work of God in a community. Not because they themselves are they themselves saying this should not go on. Are we together? That's why you cannot go and evangelize in a place 
that you don't even understand. In a sense of, you need to understand what kind of a principality is controlling that area. When I was a young man, we used to do crusades. We used to do crusades a lot. And the last time we did, uh, like, the crusades I'm talking about, it was in 2015 when we were in Mokopane Stadium. Reverend was there. Yeah, those kind of crusades. Now we do, but now we do miracle nights. So th those days we're doing uh, three days in one place. Yes. So now we just go for one day. So those days we're doing crusades. A woman came. And nicely, she warned us. She was like, uh, you guys can't have this here. You are supposed to first come and talk to me. Ask for permission. We said, okay. Uh, we didn't know that we were supposed to come and ask for permission because we have all the necessary right documents to be here. And we have paid for uh, the tents and place to be there because we're in uh, more like an open area ground, some sort of, and we had to pay. Uh, yeah. Then she, then she said, no, I'm not, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, in my language it sounds better, in the spiritual side of things, you don't come to my territory and do what you want to do without talking to me. Us being us as young boys, we stood there, we said, no. By fire, by power, this will go on. Brothers and sisters, on the Friday, because it was seven days, right? On Friday, so we started on Monday, we were supposed to finish on Sunday. On Friday, I was the one ministering. So we're like four preachers. Right, I remember very well. I can mention them because some of you, you know them so that you can ask them. I was with uh, Dumsani, DC. I was with uh, a great man of God. I believe he's still ministering even today, uh, Bongani Kumalo. I had a great man of God there as well, uh, one of the greatest preachers, you know, of all time. Amen. That guy was a machine, and I pray that he's still preaching. His name was Terry Bengu. Then it was me. Then we had, you know, people who were interceding for us and all of that. Amen. On the Friday, I was the one preaching. I could not come out. Okay, when I wanted to come out of the car, because we were ushered by old, old women. As I was about to come, the power of God was hitting everybody. As the power of God was hitting everybody, I went in front. I wanted to minister. The power was too much. The interpreter fell down. They picked the interpreter. That day, as I was preaching, you're about to hear me now. Yes, they were holding me. And I was preaching because of the power of God. In the middle of the sermon, I saw that woman. She came in like this. She sat down. As she sat down, within minutes, I looked. She was not there. And I kept on preaching. And I was talking about the Holy Ghost. As I kept on preaching, lo and behold, right inside the service, a big snake came like this towards me. Very big black snake. People, you know, when people now see snake in the church, they start jumping. It becomes chaos, right? It was now chaotic. Snake, snake, snake. DC was the one who killed it. He went, he left, he was holding me because I was in the Holy Ghost. He left me, he went to challenge the snake. He stepped on the snake. The snake was about Maybe two and a half meters long. That is long. That is long. The following day, that woman was in hospital admitted. Fighting for her life. Fighting for her life. It's not a joke. It's not a joke. There are people who have become principalities in areas. That before you do anything, you have to consult with them. I wish I could, I could go deeper. Are we together? Yes, Some of you, you know, my daughter Nombulelo was there. In the year 2008 or 9, between the two, I'm preaching. I'm delivering a lady. A woman speaks and say, leave my granddaughter alone. Otherwise, I will kill you. Me being me, because it's a spiritual thing. I said, no one can kill me. 
you are coming out of this body. And the woman speaks. She says, I will come there and deal with you. And I say, you will come here. It's a demon speaking, right? I'm like, come right now. And the woman said, I'm coming. I'm busy delivering in the name of Jesus out. You know, those days we didn't even understand what deliverance actually is. We confused casting out of devils with the manifestation of devils. If you come to our church, you will see now what is casting out of devils is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Out, we don't joke. Yes, sir. We don't have time. Yes, sir. You, you, you get the idea. Yes, and you literally see a demon leave somebody like that person, a demon just checked out. Yes, sir. In a few minutes, I started hearing people saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. When I looked, that woman came like this. Life. It's a story for another day. Some of you, you know it. Definitely. Yes, My daughter Nombulelo was there. It's not a made-up story. Yes, Watch this now. She comes there. It was bizarre. I wish I could talk about it. She went where the granddaughter was rolling. She took something that looked like Vaseline. She dipped her hand and she put it on the forehead of the girl. The girl stood up next to her grandmother as if nothing was happening. We spoke in tongues. As we were speaking in tongues, she started speaking in tongues. What are you talking about? When we were speaking in tongues, she looked at us. She came straight like this, speaking in tongues. And as if somebody told her, is this guy. She went straight to me. She stood next to me. She drew a line. What are you talking about? She said, if you think you are as powerful and strong as you are, cross this line. What are you talking about? At that time, people were surrounding the area. It was outside. principalities. Yes, sir. Some of us will have seen it all. Yes, sir. Some are like 2008. Hey, we started preaching way back before that. Hey, we have been around. Hey, you just know us now on YouTube. And yes, that's why people fight people who, don't, who they don't know where they come from. Because yes, people see us now and they think, ah, this one, yesterday. No. 2007, we're preaching. Yes, they used to put me on top of the table. I was short. People could not see me. They would put me on top of the table. And I used to prophesy at that time. They used to call me small, small. Because when I prophesied, I would say, can I do small, small? In, in, in 2010, 2009, sorry. In 2009, I preached in another community. The power of God delivered witch doctors, sorcerers. People were burning their things, their scrolls, everything. It was a five days crusade. When it was done, people were giving with buckets of avocados, goats, chickens, cows. When we were going home, it was bizarre that time. What are you talking about? Glory be to God. They are principalities. You don't go to a territory and claim that territory without overcoming and overflowing. The prince of that territory. Yes, sir, yes, sir. That's why the Bible says, and the prince of the kingdom of Persia. Yes, that is a principality. Mm -hmm. Which stood Gabriel. Mm -hmm. What are you talking about? Yes, the technology of the spirit. Oh, yeah. It is not flesh and blood that we are up against. This world is not rent by what we see. And we see it from the Bible. Pharaoh was not the one ruling Egypt. That's why whenever there was a problem in Egypt, we saw the rulers of Egypt. Ah, the Bible says, and you will call the wise men. Ah, ah, those were the ones ruling Egypt, but behind the scene. Do you know Pharaoh would not have really let go of the children of Israel if the wise men did not say, this is now the hand of God. Ah. His wise men now, they gave up and said, ah, this is beyond. Because remember the first time Moses came and threw a rod, it became a snake. He said, no problem. He called his magicians. They came, they did the same thing. That's why God had to conquer the gods of Egypt. Praise the Lord. One of the reasons why God loved David is because David was so faithful to God. 
When you look at Nebuchadnezzar, even the time when the hand wrote, Mene Mene Tekel Umparsian, he looked not for God or anybody or himself as a king to say, okay, I'm going to interpret. He called the wise men until he could not find anyone to interpret. And Daniel came. So you think anybody is in power without trusting something? Oh, you are joking, you. You, you are joking, you. Anybody out up there, that's why the Bible now summons intercessors to pray for those in power. I don't know if they are getting it. I, I don't know if they are getting it. I, I, I don't know. Wave your hand if you are still here. Wave your hand if you are, you are still here. So it is very important that as a believer you need to understand this. Glory be to God. There are certain things that when they begin to happen in your life, they begin to happen in your family. Don't look at them with a physical eye. Look at them with a spiritual eye. And that is because when it comes to you, life is spiritual. Glory be to God. Life is what? Life is spiritual. And an attack to your prayer life is an attack to your destiny. What is your destiny? Your destiny is actually your divine purpose. I'm talking about your divine purpose. The purpose that God has given you. That is your destiny. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. It's your blueprint to your tomorrow. That is your destiny. Amen. So an attack to your prayer life, or rather an attack on your prayer life, is an attack to those blueprints. Yes, blueprints. Yes, so you are going to the future blind. That's why we say closed mouth is equal to closed destinies. You know what Jesus said? Jesus said, men ought to pray always, mm. not to faint. Mm. That's Luke 18. Mm. Praise the Lord, everybody. Yes, and Paul puts it this way. He says, pray without ceasing. Mm. And if you study the word pray without ceasing there, it's not the same as men ought to pray. Mm. It's prosuke mai. Mm. Pray without ceasing. Prosuke mai. Meaning keep on declaring. In the shower, pray. While it's cooking, pray. Yes, Especially now, the days are dark. Yes. Oh, yes. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I don't know if they are getting it. Oh, yes. The days are evil. Yes, sir. The devil is working extra time. And if you are a believer, but not as uh, serious as you're supposed to be, you'll be in trouble. Parents, if there be a time to teach your children to pray, is now. I don't know if this makes sense. Believe it or not, our part two goes deeper than you think. On our part two, we'll be talking about how instead of phones, we were supposed to be telepathy. I know it's new to somebody. Like, ah, uh, where is it in the Bible? Just tune in for part two. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You'll be like, this is in my own Bible? What is this? Just tune in. Yes, sir. Spiritual things are very hard to understand, especially when somebody is not spiritual. Glory be to God. Do you know that your location here is not your location in the spirit? Here you can be in Miami. You can be in Val. You can be in Zambia, Lusaka, or Chingola. You can be in South Africa, Hamaskral, or Cape Town. But in the spirit, that's not how it's viewed. Glory be to God. And I once told you that when something happens physically, don't just conclude. 
Look at it in the spirit. I once told you that. Right? That was, uh, I think I was talking about um, spiritual places or something like that. And I was talking about how Jesus was crucified before the foundation of this earth. And I told people, I said, spiritually, Jesus was not crucified in Golgotha. Spiritually, Jesus was not crucified there. Physically, yes, he was in Golgotha. But spiritually, he was not there. I know somebody will be like, hey, what do you mean? Let's help that person go. I think it should be revelation. We need to quickly help um, somebody. Are, are they still here or they, they went home? Can you let me know what people are saying in, um, on Zoom? Amen. Thank you so much, Apostle. People are excited on Zoom. Melissa is saying, glory be to God. I'm excited. Somebody is saying, wow. Um, the other one says, another person is saying, I give praise to God for you, Apostle. Another is saying, come on, bring it on, Apostle. Another person, Augustine, is saying, I can't wait to hear part two. No, part two will be fire. Please re read Revelation 11 for me, verse 8. Amen. Part two will be fire. Because part one kind of prepares you. But I didn't want to bring the revelation at once. So it kind of like one leg on the situation. Then the, re the, the revelation is coming on part two. Uh, here you'll be like, Mama Mia. You'll be like, Mama Mia. Oh, yeah. There are certain things that we have given them to prophets. Oh, yeah. Here they are for all believers. Hey. Read revelation quickly. Thank you, Apostle. The book of Revelation, chapter 11, verse 8. Yes. And their dead bodies uh -huh. shall lie in the street of the great city, uh -huh. which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So one will say, but Jesus was not crucified in Sodom and Egypt. What does this mean? The Bible says spiritually. It's cold. Spiritually, it's cold. I know somebody's like, no ways. You just read your Bible, right? <laughs> I didn't say anything. I was just talking about certain things spiritually. Yes, sir. They mean a different thing. Amen. If you have been blessed, let me see you wave your hand in the Holy Ghost. Yes. I want to pray for people today. Amen. Today, I want to pray for people. Amen. And before I pray for people, I will give this, op God bless everybody that is giving. I want to give this opportunity to everybody. To give, praise the Lord everybody. Hallelujah. The best they can. Amen. It's our Thursday service. It was supposed to be Wednesday, isn't it? Yes, Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So, I want to give this opportunity to everyone. To give the best they can. Amen. And to honor God with their, with their giving. God bless everybody. It's giving time. Those that are tuning in for the first, first time, God bless you. You just tuned in. If you're just tuned in right now, listen to me. You tuned in in the right time. Amen. I want to quickly in the Holy Ghost give uh, people time to just honor God with their substance. Amen. So this is our service. Like it's a normal service. I want to pray for everybody. But before that, I want us to quickly honor God with our substance. So I believe on the screen you should have your, your giving details that are appearing there. God bless you, little honor of spirit man. And God bless you, um, uh, Anna. God bless everybody. Listen, God bless you, Charlotte. God bless you, Saleb. God bless everybody. We are, we are in giving time now, meaning we are in blessing time. I said something when I was ministering. The law of the spirit says what? It says something must come out for something to go in. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's a law of the spirit, right? Yes, sir. This now makes sense. Yes, 
Whilst you are giving, never give because you are compelled. Anytime you give because you are compelled, you are giving in vain. Even if you have it, as long as you feel compelled, don't give. You won't see results. Wait until you do it with a clear conscience. God loves a cheerful giver. So when you do it, even if sacrificing, but your heart is not at ease. The Bible, the Bible speaks about those who give because they are compelled. So don't give. Never give when you're compelled. Wait until, even when you feel like, okay, I'm about to give, but you feel like you're compelled. You know, as in like somebody. It's like, you know, God blesses when we give. That's what his word says. Glory be to God. But if the only reason you give is because you want God to bless you, you have, you have not understand and understood the power of giving. I wish I could talk about that, but another time. Another time. M many people ask me, Apostle, what is God saying about tithe? As if they don't have their Bibles. I pray one day God will allow me to, to teach and talk about tithe. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Because the teachings that God gives me, they are not just there to make you feel good. They are to actually take you from one level to another. These are not the days to play church. These are the days to be deep in the things of God. We... What pains me is that the world sees that we are in a dispensation of spiritual awakening. Yes. And they are approaching it using rank methods. Yes. You and I, we, we can see that, you know, Jewel prophesied, Peter affirmed it. We can see the times we are in. Yes. These are the times to move in the prophetic, in the angelic ministry. Listen, see us arise. Yes. Take your place in the church. Dream us arise. The Bible says, if there is a dreamer of dreams among you, meaning there are those who are called to dream dreams. Amen. Come on now. And next time I will teach on the mystery of a platform, but teaching on how you can use the gift so that the grace of God in your life does not end up in vain. Because Paul says, I thank God that the grace of God in my life was not in vain. Glory be to God. So, I love, I'm seeing a comment here from T, who gave, uh, I think they're in the USA because they, they used, um, on, what is that? What is this? No, YouTube, right. The, the thing is T. The name is T. So, I believe they're in the US because they gave using US dollars. Their comment says, had an angelic encounter after watching your angel video last night. My, 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 son ben, my son Bernard there was giving me a testimony just not so long about the angelic encounter that he had in his house. Literally, I'm talking about real stuff. But it's no longer new to us. It is no longer new to us. We are in a dimension where we bump to an angel and say, sorry, I didn't see you. Yes. <laughs> I'm telling you now, that's who we are. That's our life. Yes. I wish I could just bring all of you at once and put you here. And we say, let's start in the presence of God. Yes, These are things that are they. Yes. That's who we are. Yes. We had our prophetic retreat now, now. Yes, April. Yes, People from all over the world were here. Some from USA, some from India, you name it, Europe, UK, Canada, wh wherever, Denmark, whatever. Amen. They were here, right? Amen. And my son Lucas there, now he's in Chad. Hey, son, I can tell Chad is doing you good. So we had, we had, we had another son of mine from Chad who came here, yes, sir. right? Lucas is my son. He's not from Chad. He's from here. Amen. God opened the door for him. He's doing some great things there. Oh, yeah. Now, watch this. Watch this now. When we were in prayer, all of us were there. Most of you were there. Bernard was there. Most of you were watching with me. Yes, the guy was lifted in our presence. Yes, he was taken up. Yes, 
I know you are thinking, why didn't you take the picture? Pictures. Who told you we didn't? We took pictures. We captured. Um, uh, Lucas was there. Uh, who, who else was there? Who else was there? Who, who, and of course, you guys were there, but I want the people who, who are watching here because people were like, what? In prayer, somebody was lifted. Is this even real? Listen, God is real. Spiritual matters are real. Spiritual realities are real. It matters where you are. It matters the atmosphere you are feeding from. Bernard was also there. Bernard was also there. Glory be to God. He was lifted in prayer. We took pictures. It's a, it's a, it's a, you see, some of the things, we, we can't just do them until the Spirit of God permits. There must be a reason. How does it build? How, you know, it, there must be a valid reason behind us releasing them. So, because at the end of the day, glory must go back to God. We, we can't do anything in any way that will take glory from God and bring it to men. We can't. God bless everybody that is giving. God bless you, uh, Water David. God bless everybody. <laughs> Glory be to God. And I would love to advise everybody under the sound of my voice to spend more time, especially in this season, in prayer. And not just prayer, but fasting and prayer. Some of you used to do it, go back into doing it. Some of you have not started doing it, go back into doing it. Because when it comes to um, the demonic world, demons are in reigns. Just as angels are in rings. Are we together? When we talk about an unclean spirit, we are not talking about an evil spirit. When we talk about a demon, we are not talking about devils. All these things that I've mentioned are for different things. Do you know that there are spirits called evil spirits? Not because they were demons. Like in a sense of... Uh, like... Um, Fallen angels. Remember there are fallen angels and all of these things. You know when the Nephilim died? Remember how they died in the flood? Do you know that their spirits started wandering? Don't you know the curse that was placed upon the, 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 the Nephilim? Is that their spirits will wander. When you hear, it will go and look for seven spirits. It's another dimension. I'm not going to teach about it because I know you won't be ready for it. If I was to tell you that there are spirits of the Nephilim then that are still hovering around looking for bodies, you will say, ah, he's just teaching nonsense, this one. That's what you will say. And then after 10 years of maturing into the things of God, then you go like, ah, ah, he was right. You see? So there are dimensions. There are ranks. There are levels in all sides. So the, that's what Jesus said in Matthew 17, 21. This kind. He didn't say this demon. He said this kind. So in the season that we are in, we are dealing with a different kind. It needs one to be rooted in prayer and fasting. It needs women who will sacrifice in prayer. In terms of sacrifice their hours in prayer. It will need men who will tarry in the presence of God. It will need women of prayer. Women on their knees. Women who say, I'm available and I am willing. As a vessel of honor, use me for your glory. And not dictate how God should use them. In our time, God wants to use everybody. I believe that with all my heart. Listen, I believe that with all my heart. I'm not saying that there are not people who are not chosen. In that sense of these ones, you know, God has put them here. Of course, but believers in Christ, as long as you have said yes to Jesus, you have the Holy Ghost, God wants to use you. And if only we understood that, 
as men of God. I'm telling you, it was going to take us just a year to win the whole world to Jesus. That's why in our ministry now, we are starting training the trainer, which is free for free. It's starting next week for all our, you know, people, leaders that God has spoken to me about to release them into the world for the glory of Jesus. They have a home called New Life, but these ones are actually working for God. They are using what God has put in them to advance the kingdom, to reach the lost. And to empower the saved. But they need a training. Hence, we are going to use training the trainer to train them. This one is free for free. Praise the Lord, everybody. So we have a school that is coming next week. Next week or next of next week? Next of next week. On the 29th and the 30th of June. It's called the School of the Chosen. If you are in here and you believe in any way that God has put something in you, or you believe that this is your time to grow in the things of God, this is the time for you to know who you are in God, your identity in God, your calling in God, your destiny in God, and also your assignment in God, I'll advise you to register. Pray about it. Hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. Praise the Lord, everybody. I strongly believe the school of the chosen is for everybody. Amen. And trust me, don't miss this opportunity because you don't know when, when we are going to have it. And on top of that, we have Mentor Point. Amen. Mentor Point is a six months mentorship program yes, with Apostle Mism, so I get credit. Yeah. It happens every year, it starts from August. Go and register before the space is full. Glory be to God. I'm excited about it. I want to quickly pray for everybody in the Holy Ghost. If, if, if you will agree with me wherever you are, by just lifting up your hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for every man and every woman under the sound of my voice. I pray that the blessing of your word will rest mightily upon them. And not just them, but also their household. Everyone connected to them. Everyone close to their heart. Father, the blessing of your God's word will rest upon them as well. I pray that, Father, wherever they shall go, your glory shall be seen through them. Your spirit and your love will be made manifest through them. Holy Spirit, you shall stand tall through them. Wherever they appear, you shall appear. Wherever they go, you shall go through them. Father, they shall become your atmosphere. I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost that they shall take over nations through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Like a sword in the hands of a skillful fighter, you shall use them, O oh God. I pray that whatever used to conquer them then shall conquer them no more. Whatever used to stop them, hinder them, shall hinder them no more. I declare and I decree that they are being set free and they are being delivered from any oppression of the enemy. If there was an addiction, they are being delivered from it. Whatever spirit that has been haunting their lives, they are being set free and they are being separated from that spirit. I declare total deliverance. Because he that the son sets free is free indeed. I declare them free indeed. I declare them blessed. Going in, blessed. Going out, blessed. In the city, blessed. In the field, blessed. They shall owe no man nothing but love. They shall borrow from none, but they shall lend to many. As your word declares. Because a borrower is a slave to the lender. And I declare that we as your people are not slaves. I pray that Father. Those that used to pray. And don't pray no more. They are being set free. From that spirit of prayerlessness. And the spirit of prayer is being restored in them. 
the spirit of prayer is made is being made manifest in them by the power of the Holy Ghost. I call them back into the place of prayer. Those that used to see that don't see no more. Let those scales fall off. Those that used to hear and don't hear no more. We awaken their ears. In the name of Jesus. Those that used to dream and understand and have interpretation. And don't, they don't dream no more. We declare and we decree that they shall dream again. They shall see visions again. They shall go into trances again. In the name of Jesus. Just as Isaiah said, morning after morning, you awaken his ears. I declare and I decree that morning after morning, you shall awaken their ears. As you will seal their instruction, Father, when they wake up, they will know what to do. They will know how to do it. They will know who to do it with and when to do it. They are protected from the wickedness of men. And they are going in and they are going out. They are protected. Every plan of the enemy against their lives, I declare it has been turned upside down. Everyone under the sound of my voice, I prophesy over your life. You are moving from glory to glory. From one level of grace to another. From one level of power to another. From one level of the prophetic to another. You are the righteousness of God by Christ Jesus. And right now as I'm praying to you, the blood of Jesus is speaking against any guilt that is on your neck right now. You are forgiven by the blood of Jesus. You are cleansed by the blood of Jesus. You are a child of God. You are a child of destiny. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Somebody say that is so. In Jesus' name. God bless everybody. I believe you were blessed and your lives shall never be the same again. So, I see we have so many people that are registering for the school. Go ahead and make sure that you go to drmeesschoolofministry.com and register, sign up for the school of the chosen. Don't miss it for any reason. Fight whatever fights you and be present in that school. Have you been blessed tonight? So, we are going to um, have a service this coming Sunday. And I thought to my spirit, we are going to deal with the realm of prosperity. But then again, the Holy Spirit this morning told me and said, no, this coming Sunday, we are dealing with the atmosphere for miracles. I, uh, I, uh, bring your documents. If you have a passport, bring it. If you have an ID card, bring it. We shall speak to your documents. And your documents will hear the word of the Lord. I, uh, this coming Sunday, ah, all I need when I stand in front of there is Apostle speak the word. Hallelujah. The Bible says, and the word became flesh. Meaning the word was not flesh. Became flesh. The word became flesh. If the word can become flesh, the word can become your car. The word can become your house. Hallelujah. The word can become your breakthrough. So don't miss the service this Sunday. Be in the arena of liberty. Especially this season. Be there. Be in Runbeck. For God has remembered Runbeck. God has remembered South Africa. Be there. Be there. Be there. This Sunday we had an amazing time. In the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about instant healing. Miracles. Things taking place like that. The anointing will touch you. And if you are in Botswana, if you are in Botswana, get ready. 
You know, last year, we were in Botswana in July, the 22nd. Yes, and July is knocking. Yes, I'm not saying much. But if you're in Botswana, get ready. Yes, we are coming to your country. And if Botswana is not ready, Zambia, Kenya, Zimbabwe, USA, get ready. We move by the move of the Spirit. Oh, yeah. So if the Spirit says, I want you here, that's where we are. Yes, we don't go where we are needed by people. Yes, we go where the Spirit says go. Yes, right now, the Spirit of God is mightily moving here in South Africa and run back. Oh, yeah. Come to run back. This Sunday, be present. Yes, Hear the word of the Lord. I love you with the love of God. Don't forget to register. I believe you have been blessed. And God bless everybody. So, where the man of God sits. <laughs> God bless you. The man of God sits. Yes, sir. There is an anointing. There is power. That is so. Where the man of God sits. You also want to sit there? Are you sure you're going to do something with the anointing? Are you going to do something with the anointing? Do it, Major. Because as soon as you sit there, your life shall never be the same again. Yeah. Go and sit. Where the man of God sits. Major. The man of God. Yes, sir. Your life that is so shall never be the same again. Where the man of God is that is so. They won't stand it when you show up. That is so. Look at this. Look at how they won't stand it when you show up. Where the man of God sits. The Bible says in the days of the apostles. Handkerchiefs were taken out of the pockets of the apostles and they were put on the sick and the sick recovered. They took the same handkerchiefs, dropped it on those who were demon possessed. The Bible says, and demons checked out if the handkerchief could contain the anointing, if these things could carry the anointing. What more about you? You are better than a handkerchief. That is so. In the days of Peter, the Bible says, and the sick were laid on the streets. So that at least, don't forget the word at least. It is so that at least Peter's shadow could touch them. And the Bible says, whoever was touched by the shadow was made whole. You are better than the shadow of Peter. That is so. If the bones of Elisha could raise the dead, you are better than the bones of a dead. That is so.